<laughs> I am presenting a spectacular webinar today. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. I love it. All right, let me know if you can see and hear me okay. You've got to be able to see me. Uh, <laughs> happy Halloween. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> uh, I'm waiting for comments. I'm not taking off the mask until I know that you can see me. Oh, my gosh. Welcome to Noon with Nemo. Uh, I'll put this in the comments. Uh, happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. Roy says, I never look better. This is true. I didn't do my makeup today. Just kidding. <laughs> How is everyone? Let me know in the chat where you're logging in from and what type of work you do. Let me know uh, where you're logging in from and what type of work you do. All right, love it, love it, love it. Your tan is fading. Yes, I know. What can I do? All right, should I keep the mask on the whole time? <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. Nothing looks different. <laughs> I'm trying to read all the comments. Your tan is fading. Oh, I love it. All right, good. People are in the spirit. What is your? Let's do this. Important. Uh, question for the chat. What is your favorite uh, Halloween improvement? Let me know that. Mark's a slight improvement. That's what I'm saying. Favorite Halloween candy? Put it in the chat. All right, let's do that. Favorite Halloween candy? Put it in the chat. All right, there's Royce letting me know the weather in Mesa as usual. Oh, it's getting hot under this mask. I just want to make sure all the latecomers get to see it. I want to welcome everybody that's getting logged in. We've got tons of people coming. So let's see. We've got James, Mary, Mark. we got Royce. we got Stuart. we got Bruce, Catherine, Kurt from Madtown. Joel Ingram is here. we got Terry Conlon. we got Xavier, Judy Powers, Mike, Dave Matthews. Big fan of your music, David Matthews. What happened to the, what happened to the band? I haven't seen you for a while. <laughs> Joel, we got Lee, it looks like. Or is it Les? we got... Ryan, we got David, we got all kinds of people. Love it, love it, love it. Joe says happy Halloween, and he has the correct answer, which is peanut butter cups. Whew, this is getting hot. This is getting really hot, so I'm going to take it off. <laughs> all right, we got Mary says licorice, Catherine Almond Joy. All right, Lee is saying peanut butter cups, correct? What does Joel got? Refreshers? I've never heard of that one. Kit Kats are solid. That's a solid choice. Favorite Halloween candy, James Twix. My wife, Sarah, would definitely agree with you on that, my friend. I want to say welcome to everyone. If you've never been on this before, this is obviously Noon with Nemo. I'm John Nemo. Uh, I like to have fun on these uh, different broadcasts. Each week, we cover a different topic. And today, we're going to really dive deep into podcasting and how to really, uh, not only just podcasting, but also audiobooks and really understanding a couple of key things one is I really want you to know like what goes into great audio content. What are kind of the indispensable elements of engaging audio? So we're going to start with that, a little bit of training, and then we'll dive into kind of how to grow and monetize a podcast if you have one or if you want to start one. Um, and Mark says, I didn't think I'd get more handsome. This is true. This is, this is a good look for me. So again, I want to welcome everybody that's here. Um, we're going to have a lot of fun today. We're going to cover a lot about audio. So let me do this. Um, let me get the video ready and I'll have some different training going here. I'll also be live in the chat. If this is your first time, welcome. <laughs> Do you know what you're in for, right? So again, thank you, thank you, thank you. Let's get started. Um, first up, I'm going to have some training on kind of the indispensable elements of engaging audio. So let's dive into that right now. All right, now it's time to dive into one of my favorite forms of content marketing, audio. Oh man, I love audio. <laughs> Can you tell? Can you tell listening to me talk how much I love audio? And in particular, I really have come to enjoy and seen a lot of benefit from podcasting. 
perfect example. I had a guy just today email me. He's in the middle of Australia, mate, right? He's driving across the country of Australia for five hours. Guess what he did for that five hour drive? He binge listened to several episodes of my Nemo radio podcast. Like how, how is that even possible? How does this even happen, right? This is the world we live in where some random person whom I have never met, never in a million years would get in front of in the middle of Australia, driving across the outback, mate, right? <laughs> Whatever it might be, is binge listening to my podcast. And that's the opportunity we have. When you think about podcasts and why they have become so popular and why they are so important and why they are going to play such a big role with content marketing moving forward is very simply put, they are mobile. You don't need to be sitting at a desk to listen to a podcast. You don't even have to be in front of a computer. You can be out driving across the outback of Australia. You can be mowing the lawn. You can be walking your dog. You can be folding laundry. Whatever it is, podcasts are passive listening. You do that while you're doing something else. People love utilizing podcasts on their commute to work, while they're traveling, uh, while they're you know killing time, waiting for the kids at the park, while they're doing whatever it might be, they can have those earbuds in, those earphones on, listening to your content. And this is really where the opportunity lies with podcasting, is understanding the depth and the quality of your podcast audience. This is really something unique and different than other forms of content. Maybe the best way to explain it is this. Imagine you, every week for 30 minutes, got to stand up in a room of 500 people, 500 people who literally were hanging on your every word for that 30 minutes, for that half hour. They couldn't get enough of it. And the next week, 600 people showed up. And the next week, 700 people showed up. And all of them there to listen to you talk. Well, that's what podcasting is, correct? Every single listener who goes through your podcast is like an audience member. So when you see those download numbers go from one to five to 10 to 100 to 500 to 1000, those are real people all over the world listening to your content. Your voice is literally in their head, in their ears. They are listening to you and that builds such camaraderie, that builds such trust, that builds such a deeper level of intimacy than say written content, a blog post or something like that. Not that those are bad forms of content marketing, they're not, but podcasts have a unique ability to really build a close, intimate relationship with your audience. So when it comes to recording a podcast, it's actually very easy to do if you wanna do it yourself. All you need is a microphone. I use a Blue Yeti mic. It's a USB mic, so it plugs right into my computer. And then I open up GarageBand. I'm a Mac guy. I hate PCs. I will never touch a PC if I can help it. But I'm in GarageBand. And so what I do is, you know, I've got these different sound areas. This is my little intro to the podcast. And then I put in little sound effects. And these are some of my favorite sound effects from movies and pop culture. So this one, Don't Call Me Shirley, that's from the movie Airplane. And, and you'll hear this in a second. ABC is from Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross, where Alec Baldwin always be closing. And then another one where he says, put that coffee down. Uh, another one where a famous football coach, Mike Gundy from Oklahoma State, yells, come after me, I'm a man, I'm 40. He was mad that they were criticizing his players in college. Uh, and then let me show you here what I do is I've saved this right as a template uh, if you're familiar with GarageBand or sound editing platforms once you put it in it's done and I use a song called my way which is a Los Lonely Boys song it's got a great instrumental guitar riff and the reason I'm showing you this is the intro the opening to your podcast is really important that can become the most popular feature in fact of your entire podcast people really really like a familiar introduction if you think about talk radio and your favorite talk radio shows that you listen to in the car or on the way to work or whatever it is don't they always have the same song to start it don't they always have the same introduction the same funny sound clips this the, this applies also with podcasts you want to do the same thing so I never change my intro it's always the same thing it's these same sound effects and I'll play it for for you here in a minute but it's basically the same intro and then here at the top I basically have a little thing called Nemo audio 
and I go in and I just record my podcast right there. And that way, when I'm done, I can make any edits, I can trim anything. If I have an interview, I will record the guest audio and put it in here. And then I just do a file export and off we go, right? Share, export the song to a disc. I upload it to a podcast network that I use. It pushes it out to all the different podcasts. Uh, players, uh, you know, Apple and Google and everything else. And that's kind of the logistics, a quick and dirty look behind the scenes at how to create and produce a podcast. Now, I don't want to go too deep into the weeds on how the logistics of creating and recording a podcast work. There's plenty of separate trainings for that and courses for that, and the tools can change all the time. Here's what you need to know just at a base level. You either want to outsource this, and there are people that will produce and create the whole podcast for you. All you have to do is record your audio, and they will edit it and put in fancy sound effects and do it all for you and upload it. Or you can do it all yourself and piece it together like I have using different tools like GarageBand on a Mac or Audello or some of these other tools and then finding a podcast provider software. There's tons of those out there that will push out your podcast to Apple and to Google and to these other you know, listening apps and things like that. So you decide up front based on your skill set, your time commitment, all those things. Do I want to try to do this myself? go out on my own and learn all these things, or do I just want to outsource it? Is my role simply just to record the audio, hand over that file to someone else, and it comes back as a polished show? And that's totally fine. Again, time is money. It depends on what you want to do, where your strengths are. As far as the format of a podcast episode, there are a few different styles you can utilize. When we're talking about business-themed podcasts, typically it's either going to be an interview-based show where you are the host and you bring in an expert to share his or her insight on a topic that your audience is interested in, or you do a solo episode where you simply come on and you teach and train and talk about you know, a topic that's of interest to your audience. I do both and both work incredibly well. My big thing with it is don't feel like you're forced to stay really rigid and only do this format and only do it this way, those types of things. Be creative, be flexible, watch your statistics because also, with podcasting software, the beautiful thing about this is you will get measurables. This many people listened to this episode. This many people downloaded this episode. You will see, you'll see trends. Wow, this guest really got a lot more listeners, and this topic really seemed popular, whereas this other solo podcast on this topic really fell flat. So you'll be able to adjust. You'll be able to ask your audience, of course, through the podcast, through the one question survey that I mentioned before. What are you interested in? What do you want to hear? What do you want to know about? Now, without going too far back into all the previous modules in this section about how to create compelling content, when it comes to podcast episodes, a couple very simple reminders, simple tips. One is the quality and tone of your voice. You've got to have emotion and excitement and passion and energy and enthusiasm. If you're just kind of talking, you know, like you talk to your wife about going to get milk at the store right? People are not excited. Sorry. But if you're really excited and you just amp up the energy and the volume and I'm gesturing right now while I'm talking, uh, you know, my eyes are open, my face is open. It's almost like voice acting, really bringing out your voice, bringing out your passion into the microphone so that people respond to that emotionally as they listen. The other key element with the content of your podcast episodes is, of course, going back to what we've covered already in this training is telling great stories. Always looking for if this podcast episode's about this topic, what's a great anecdote or personal story I have to illustrate that topic? Your listeners love good stories. In fact, some of the most popular podcasts out there are podcasts like Serial, where that was a soap opera almost, episode to episode, they're telling you a true crime story. What's gonna happen next? Who did it, right? We love stories, we love curiosity. So bring that into your podcast. Tell me great stories that also contain an important lesson. And when you're doing interviews, I get asked about this a lot, you know, when you're interviewing a guest or a podcast, it's always a good idea to write out some questions ahead of time, send those to your guest if they're willing to kind of say, here's the topics I want to talk about so you can prepare yourself. 
but don't get too married to your set of questions. Feel free to let it flow into a good conversation. Those are the best episodes. Those are the best interviews where you just talk. You talk, you get passionate, you share ideas, you pivot off something the other person said and go into a different direction. That's going to be valuable to your listeners. So again, when you create podcasts, always think in terms of what's in it for my listener. What will they get out of this topic or this episode? How will I engage them? Do I have a good story to illustrate this point? Or if I'm bringing this guest on, what would people want to know? What would be a win for my audience when they hear from that guest? And when it comes to publishing your podcast, when to make it live, when to alert people, and we'll talk more about this in the coming sections of this training, but I like the idea of always publishing your podcast on a regular schedule, meaning it comes out at a regular day and a regular time. So people are anticipating it. Oh, I know every Tuesday morning, John publishes a new episode of the podcast. I'll be ready, I'll be looking, I'll be hitting refresh on my podcast app. That's how you want to approach this is having consistency so people know when to expect your new episodes to come out. Frequency is totally up to you. Some people do a podcast every single day. Some people do one a week. Some people do just a couple a month. I have found a good rhythm of one or two shows per week. That really seems to work well. It doesn't overdo it. It's not too demanding and it keeps you in front of your audience. Remember that room full of people hanging on your every word, it keeps you in front of them a few times a week where you're staying fresh, you're staying current, you're staying top of mind. And as far as branding your podcast, as far as what it should be about or what it should look like, you always want, in my opinion, you always want your podcast to really promote your personal brand. That means having your face on the cover art, having your name on the show, having you know your brand, your presence, your personality just oozing through the entire show, the title of it, the artwork, the name, the logo, right? This is an extension of you, of your personality, and you want to utilize it as such. So one final assignment here as we finish up this video, before you move on to the next one, think about a topic for your podcast. Think about in your mind, if you decide to do a podcast, what would be something your ideal audience would be interested in? What's a theme? What's a theme that you could really expand on? Keep it focused on something that your audience would love. What would they love tips on? What would they love insights on, strategies about? What's your expertise? Because once you create that theme, now the show and the episodes can flow out of it. You can start thinking of solo episodes where you explain certain strategies or tools or techniques or tips related to your theme or guests related to your theme, people who have expertise related to your theme. That's the key behind all of this is having an overarching umbrella type theme to the show. So, yeah, I mean, hopefully people are taking this very seriously today. This is an important topic. I don't want to. <laughs> hey, seriously, if you don't put your personality into your podcast, into your content, you're really missing out. So, again, sorry, especially for those that are. It's Halloween, man. I gotta, I gotta have a little fun. Now, <laughs> people are freaking out about the my eyes up here. So here's the key thing: really understanding. That's just a little snippet of what goes into you know creating a really good podcast. That was kind of behind the scenes of how I do Nemo Radio, as far as some of the editing and equipment, and then just a quick kind of synopsis of what goes into good audio content. The nice thing is, again, it's pretty universal. It's storytelling. And it's, you know, having a personal story plus a business lesson, that makes for great content. That always does. Again and again and again and again and again. Okay. People are, yes, you should all be here in costume, right? Put on your unicorn horn. Let's live it up, right? <laughs> We've already gone through favorite types, Halloween candy. The correct answer was Reese's peanut butter cups in case anyone was wondering. Now I've got more training for you. All right. So if you're having fun, I want to get into a little bit more training really want to dive into how to grow your podcast. This is a key one is really like, okay, you're creating a podcast, you're getting it out there, you're publishing it. How do you get people to listen? How do you find your audience? All that. So without further ado, let's dive back in. Now we're going to dive into how to actually grow a podcast.
Okay, I'm back on. It looks like the audio was not working. Um, now I'm coming on as a, a disgruntled webinar host. <laughs> Why does it do this? I don't. Some weeks it works fine. Some weeks the sound does not work. Um, but let me do this. I, I put in the chat kind of one of the key things, and then I'll try to I'll try to reboot the video and see if that doesn't work um, for us. So let me, okay, so let me try one thing here. Um, one of the things I was talking about was really pitching yourself as a guest on other podcasts. So let me actually share my screen with you and just show you a little bit about that. So I actually covered this last week on Noon with Nemo. So there's a full video here. But this is honestly one of the fastest and best ways to grow your podcast is to pitch yourself on other people's shows. And that's what I was walking through was um, John Nemo entrepreneur on fire i was just going to show you here you know someone was talking earlier about the um value the seo value right so one of the fastest ways that i've grown my podcast is being on other people's podcasts so like here i was on entrepreneur on fire which is a very well-known seven day a week podcast from john lee dumas and this is a good one to listen to as well if you want to know and i've told this story in other places i'll link to this because we tell the backstory on it um how I got on the show, right? Because normally it's impossible to get on John's show. It's, you know, super in demand. He has like millions of listeners, et cetera. Uh, I'll actually link to that here in the chat. Um, so I'll say Nemo EO fire interview, open that up in a new tab and then you can listen to it. But basically I covered this last week in how to be a guest. So if you want to watch the, you know, previous session, just go uh, to LinkedIn Riches. I'll just show you where this is under free tips, noon with Nemo. And then you can always find previous sessions. And I covered this in last week's session, really how to, how to pitch yourself. But one of the key ways, this is how I got on Entrepreneur on Fire um, and other shows was offered to do something of value for the host. So in this case, I actually offered to, you know, and that's why he's titling it Humility and Service. I offered to rewrite John Lee Dumas's LinkedIn profile for free and then come on the podcast to talk about kind of the before and after with his LinkedIn profile, why I did what I did, even just the whole approach for marketing of, you know, how I got on John's show and caught his attention was before I asked, hey, put me on your show. I'm awesome. Like I was like, hey, can I, you know, bring you some value and rewrite your LinkedIn profile for free? You don't have to talk to me. You don't have to do anything. And it worked really well, right? And it got me on the show, got me in front of a ton of people. And this is a key way because, Think about it. When someone already listens to a certain podcast and they hear you as a guest and they enjoy you, the natural next thing they're going to think and hear about is, oh, you know, I really liked you on John Lee Dumas' show. Uh, I'll go listen and subscribe to your show. So this is one of the best ways that I found to grow very quickly is put yourself on as a guest, right? And I have a whole training from last week about that. And it's also in my podcast power. Um, powerhouse podcast course, which we'll talk about later. But the idea is get yourself on other people's shows. And at the end, when the host says, Hey, where else can people follow you or find you online? Then you're like, Oh, well, if you've enjoyed this interview and you want more of this type of content, I have my own podcast. It's called Nemo radio. Here's a link, et cetera, et cetera. And off you go. And so like another one, I can find it here. The power of Google, baby. Um, yeah, let's see. It might be this one. Yeah. So this is the same thing. Social media examiner, how I got on their podcast. Right. And <clears throat> excuse me, same idea. I pitched it to them. Hey, I'll do your profile for free. But at the end, my call to action was, Hey, if you're enjoying this, come listen to Nemo radio. So that's one of my favorite ways to do it. Um, and there's more methods we can talk about. So let me, something's beeping at me. <laughs> Hold on. All right. So uh, let me look in some questions here. All right. So we got a question from Catherine. Would it be better to start with training videos on a YouTube channel? Less pressure to keep updating. You know, I mean, I really think it's not that much pressure. It, it's a podcast. The other thing too, Catherine, is repurpose. So for example, you watch Noon with Nemo every single week, correct? Or hopefully you do. And so what I do is, I not only do this show live, you're seeing me here live right now with my, you know, Halloween mask in the background. Scary. Uh, I then take the episode 
and I put it on, you can see I put it on YouTube and then I repurpose it on my website. And then I also put it on my podcast. So what you can do is if you're already doing YouTube training videos, just take out the audio or strip out the audio and upload it as a podcast. And I'll show you what that looks like. So take you behind the scenes here, Nemo Radio. We'll go down to, I call it live training replay. So actually what you'll see is uh, the way that I'll describe it. <clears throat> and again, this is just the raw audio from my YouTube video or my live webinar. I'll say, hey, here's, you know, here's what you discover. And then I say, watch the replay. So in the podcast description, in the podcast area, I'll say like, here's a link to watch the replay on video. Here's a link to the course. Here's a link to more training. Some people are going to just listen to the audio. And that's why I like repurposing everything. So if you're already doing videos, take out the audio. Or if you're doing live webinars, take out the audio and put it out as a podcast. So again, you don't have to create separately for every single thing. There's a reason I take noon with Nemo, right? And I literally, I'm here live with you for an hour today. Then I put it up on YouTube. So organically, right? It's just getting searched and found on YouTube. Then I'm putting it on my website. So I have all these replays. Again, organically showing up. Here's a replay. Here's the YouTube video. Then I'm also going to Spreaker.com and I'm uploading audio of the show, right? So I'm uploading. You can see I've got podcasts scheduled out into December. And what I'm doing is, again, I've got um, last week's Noon with Nemo, live training replay, how to pitch yourself as a podcast guest. Or if I go into the editor, you can see I just have the text here. And I basically say, hey, discover this. Da -da 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 -da. Here's a link to watch the actual replay. Here's a link to get the course. Here's more training. Repurpose all this content. And, and so I think it gets a lot less intimidating if you realize there's so many different ways to create podcast content. Like if you're already doing videos, just take out the audio and do them as podcasts, right? If you're doing live trainings, webinars, record everything and just repurpose it. Think of yourself as a media company. That's a big one. Um, so let me get in. Kurt's got some good advice. All right. Uh, I don't currently transcribe for SEO, Steve. I know some people do that. Um, let's see if Ray Edwards still does that. That's a guy uh, I used to listen to quite a bit. Um, and he's a friend of mine. And he transcribes every single episode, or at least he used to. So, like, again, here's another podcast I was on where, guess what? At the end, I said, come listen to Nemo Radio, right? Um, but, yeah, you can see he puts a lot of content out. Um, he's got a transcript here. It definitely helps. It's not going to hurt you. Um, and it's pretty affordable now. So you can see, you know, he's just got like the automated transcript of him and I talking. It really depends on your personal preference and, and again, how much work you can do yourself versus automating it. And there's now software and tools and different things like that. Uh, a good one is called headliner. Let's see if I can find it. So, oh no, not this one. Um, oh, what's it called? I think it's this one where you can make little videos. Yeah. Oh no. Okay. I'm thinking of what's it called? It's, um, here it is. And it was called headliner.app. This is one it's free and they'll take your podcast audio and turn it into sounds. So, or into videos, I'm sorry. So they'll take your audio and turn it into videos. So basically it's free. You just upload a snippet of your audio content. Um, and then they do have like a paid thing. I don't think it's that much. Um, but basically you can go in and turn these into little, you know, this is where you'll see on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram, like, you know, a picture of a person talking and just snippets and their voice moving. I've made these before. So I use the free one. Um, I'll put this in the, this is just another way to re repurpose. So how to kind of promote your podcast to grow it is that headliner.app then let's see what kurt said because kurt people are giving you um before we launch recommend several weeks yes would agree would agree yes that's the key thing is like you can see it takes a lot of pressure off when you schedule ahead of time so for me i try to do two episodes a week so like on november 2 i'm going to do a live replay of a noon with nemo on two days later, so Tuesdays and Thursdays, I want to come out consistently. Two days later, 
I've already got one in the can about, you know, it's an interview on how to secure high ticket clients. It's an interview I did a while back for my podcast. You know, then a week later, I've got how to handle haters and critics, uh, a couple live training replays from Noon with Nemo, how to pre-qualify people, right? So I've got these all scheduled and that's great advice from Kurt is really, yes, <laughs> like build up a library before you go live. And again, you've got the content. And another question often that I'll get is like, what's the magic length? Like how long should a podcast be? It doesn't matter. It can be a minute long. It can be an hour long. It just depends on how much good content you have and the tips you have and the format of your show. If, if you're doing a very interview-based podcast, people are going to expect it to be longer. Uh, if you're doing like, if your whole hook for your show is like five minute marketing tips, every show is going to be five minutes. So the great thing about this is like the only boundaries or limits on this are just your creativity. So you get to decide, you get to, you know, do what you want to do. But like, this is a great tool to use this and then create these little videos. Let me see if I can um, do one here on the spot or if I have one, let me see. Um, because I, I did them in the past where like, yeah, they have even templates where you just can upload your episode art. Then you can see how it's moving. So you just can promote it on, you know, different platforms like, hey, my new episode is out. Have a quick listen to a snippet of it. Um, and then also like they'll do captions for you, automated captions. You can do editing. Let's see if I have any projects in here. Should I see if I have one? These are old, obviously. This is like a year old. But I mean, it, it really worked well. So like this is an example where um, it actually put in the automated captions. And then I just dropped in the sound. Let's see if it's still... Yeah, this was on how to make a sticky website. And then I could add in the captions and then just share this little video, you know, wherever I wanted on Twitter, YouTube, Facebook. Like, hey, listen in to learn five secrets. And then it's a little audio snippet. So again, these are super easy to do. Uh, this is just, I wanted to share this because this is another great way to kind of grow your podcast is promote it on social media, but give people little bite-sized snacks, correct? Like give them a little, just a little snippet of the show, a little teaser. And then you can also publish these obviously on YouTube. So here's another one, like how do you get people interested in your show? Like, so again, you can, you can make these, they're super easy. It's all online. If there's other questions, what other questions do people have? Okay. Is it possible for people? No, they don't know the audio stripped. I mean, I tell them that Lee, like I'll say like, Hey, uh, on this episode of Nemo Radio, you know, I'm going to be covering, uh, this is audio from a replay of a live training I did on blank. And if you want to watch the replay, look at the show notes. Here's a link to the replay. So I give them both options. And obviously it's kind of, you see this trend a lot now with talk radio shows where they have the talk radio show live on TV. So you watch the hosts while they're talking, but the audio also is getting pushed out there too. So Again, that's another good one. If you have more questions, thank you, Steve. I'm glad you're finding this helpful. Yeah, once you go live, keep going. Consistency is the key. That's the other big tip. If you want to grow your podcast, you have to be consistent. It's Think about this. like You have your favorite TV shows. You have your favorite movies. If you're addicted to certain shows on like Netflix or Apple TV or whatever, they have new episodes every Friday or they have new episodes every Wednesday, just like Seinfeld, right? A great TV show or friends, a great TV show from the nineties. I'm dating myself. It came out every Thursday night. And so Thursday night at seven o'clock, you were ready. The same idea with a podcast where people know like at six fifty five AM on Tuesdays and Thursdays, a new episodes coming out. And that's really, really important to be able to get out and do that um, and just have it consistently going, going, going. Um, let me see if I can show you. So inside Spreaker, this is what I use for podcast distribution. This is how you get it out. Like they'll push it out to Apple, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google, Amazon, all the big ones. Um, and I like this because people always ask, well, how do you get your podcast onto all these networks? You just upload it once to Spreaker and you connect one time to all these networks and then it just pushes it out, right? And it'll tell you, hey, you're added, you're added, or you know, you need to do something else. So like I can click on the Amazon one and see. Um, okay, so I'm gonna submit it to Amazon, fill out the form. Oh, is uh, is ready to be submitted, fill out the form. I think it's already on Amazon to be honest. So I don't know why it's repurposing this. 
Oh, maybe they've changed it. Oh, because of Alexa and Audible. Yeah, I'm already on there, I think. So anyway, if I look on audible.com and look for Nemo Radio, yeah, there I am. So I'm on there. Like, again, they want content, all these different networks. And so this is how you, quote, get found and get discovered. Like, I'm on audible.com as a podcast, right, for free, or Amazon Music, right? That's another one where, again, you can get it on Amazon Music, sign in, whatever. Should be in there. Yep, if I just search. Whoa, okay. Nemo Radio. So, again, you want to find people where they're at. I'm in there somewhere. There I am. Podcasts. Yep. So anyway, there's lots and lots of different ways. This is why I like Spreaker. It just gets it on all these different platforms. Uh, what other questions do people have? Uh, I refuse to believe you. Oh, believe me. I have haters and critics. <laughs> that is uh, that's just part of being out there online. Uh, what is your thought pattern for coming up with topics, Steve? Great question, Steve. Uh, personal stories personal stories that I can turn into a business lesson. And I do this over and over and over and over again. So for example, Steve, this morning I was taking my son Bailey to school uh, and he's struggling studying for a test and it's just rote memorization. And it's kind of, I started riffing as I'm driving him to school about, man, the American school system, it's so broken. Like none of this is going to help him in business. He's an entrepreneur. Here, I'll show you Bailey's story. So I'm riffing because I'm thinking as I'm driving this kid out of school, this is my son. He's an entrepreneur. He's 13 years old. He's already got a super successful business. Um, he's making money already. And he's really chafing with the traditional school system. He's like, dude, why do I need to know the capitals of the provinces of Canada? How's it going to help me with my business that I have and this claw machine and everything I'm doing? And so that's a personal story, Steve. And I'm thinking now, what's the business lesson there? Right. The business lesson is. You know, you don't have to just go along because other people say it has to be done a certain way, right? Like, I think if there's a mindset quote, um, and I could probably find it if I look hard enough. Um, let me look here in my photos. We're just riffing. I love this kind of training. So let me go into my quotes. Da, 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 quotes. It's in here somewhere. It's in mindset quotes. Where is it? Come on, Nemo. All right. There's a quote in here that talks about the unreasonable, you know, the world depends on unreasonable people. Um, I'm going to find it. I'm going to find it. Oh, here it is. I knew I could find it. Here's the quote. And this so applies to Bailey. The reasonable man adapts himself to the world or the current school system, right? The unreasonable person persists in trying to adapt the world to himself. That is entrepreneurs, that line. Entrepreneurs, unreasonable Adapt the world to yourself. Therefore, all progress depends on the unreasonable person. So what I could do, Steve, is I could tell a story about, hey, I was driving my son to school. He's an entrepreneur. He's 13. He's already having success in business. And man, is he frustrated. And I'm frustrated as a parent, like the typical school, school system of, you know, in the United States, rote memorization, capitals of Canada, you know, parentheses and hypothesis about math problems, whatever, whatever, like they're not adapting to the kid. Right. And I get it. Like you can't adapt every kid's, you know, curriculum to every kid. But for him, if it's about entrepreneurship and business and helping people and helping kids, like he wants to learn more about it. Um, so the personal story is I'm driving him to school. He's frustrated. That's a story. The business lesson is the mindset, right? The entrepreneur mindset, which my son has. And he's like, I want to adapt the world to what I want to do. Um, because, right, the world isn't telling him, yeah, 13-year-old uh, kids can have businesses. Like, <laughs> right? He's unreasonable. He came to me when he was 11 and wanted to start a business. So there's, an, there's a podcast episode, right, where I can say, hey, you know, here's this fun story about my kid, personal story. Here's the business lesson. Um, so, yeah, great question. Look at me. I'm pulling out all kinds of stuff here. All right. So let's get back to the questions. Um, he is a hater of me because of the sports teams you like. That is true. Kurt likes all the worst sports teams on earth, like the Green Bay Packers um, and the Wisconsin Badgers. They're bad people. Anyone that lives in Wisconsin is a bad person. My wife is out there probably laughing. She's not even listening. Um, have you ever used episodes? Uh, how have I used podcast episodes to go into a digital funnel? Great, great question. Yes, I have. 
So depending on the episode, Kurt, and I'll just go back in here. Let's go. Uh, what I'll do is I'll put links into the show notes. Um, so again, I might say something like, hey, today we're going to cover a training. This is actually from my podcasting powerhouse course. You're going to hear a training today, um, some audio from the course. If you want to learn more, click on the link in the show notes to get a special offer or go to podcast, whatever, you know, URL. Um, and then I'll, uh, so Kurt, I do two things. I put links in the show notes. So again, anyone consuming a podcast on a mobile app, a podcast app, it has room for text and it makes these hyperlinks clickable. So you can click and they can opt in and get the funnel. Uh, another thing you can do is offer bonuses. So you can say, hey, if you really liked today's podcast episode on how to pitch yourself as a guest and you want a video training that goes with it, or if you want a bonus um, set of scripts that you can use for emails, like I mentioned, go to, you know, nemoradio.com forward slash bonus, right? Do that right now or nemoradio.com forward slash episode two. And then people will go, it'll take them to a landing page. They can opt in, right? So for example, I could talk about LinkedIn tips. And then I could say, hey, if you want to extend what you're learning on today's podcast, go to linkedinriches.com. You can get my whole book for free right there on the front. And then they can do this while they're listening to the podcast. So yeah, great question, Kurt. Build in URLs that are either easy to remember that you can just say like over the air, so to speak, or and or put them in the show notes so they can click them and make it a bonus that enhances what you're covering on the podcast topic or, you know, a direct link to the course. Um, that's a good question, Mark. I haven't looked into that. I know Alexa skills and all that are a big thing. I haven't tested that. I know some people are doing that. I love it. You do not want me voicing your GPS, especially in Wisconsin. I'd be like, don't go down this road. There's bad people. Don't turn here. There's bad people. Kurt, head east immediately on 94. Gun it till you hit the Twin Cities. You're not safe. <laughs> That's my GPS. All right. Uh, let's see. How would you take an ancient story and bring it to business lessons in the present day? Well, the nice thing, Mike, is like people don't change. Like, I don't know how ancient you're talking about, like a story, like a Bible story or a parable or whatever. Like human behavior does not change. Human actions don't change. Human emotions don't change. So the story will still apply. Um, and then it's just the lessons are still timeless, right? So look for stories that have timeless lessons and timeless kind of themes. And then they become exciting in the present day. So like, for example, I'll take lessons from Dale Carnegie's book, How to Win Friends and Influence People. This is, this is the book that I literally built my whole business on, okay? How to Win Friends and Influence People. All right, let's find it. Okay. So basically, you know, I built my whole business off a book that was written in 1936. So a lot of the stories in there are about uh, when I was talking to steel, you know, steel magnet and coal barons and you know, like old like types of businesses, or when I wrote a letter and mailed it through the Pony Express, right? <laughs> like those are old stories, uh, but the principles are the same. And so like the stories still resonate with me because he talks about, you know, for example, like writing a personalized thank you note to a person and mentioning things you learned about them. Like one of my favorite lessons from How to Win Friends and Influence People was take notes on kind of icebreakers about people, correct? Like where they're from, where they went to school, learn about their family, learn about their hobbies. And so he's talking about that in a 1936 context, like, hey, bring a pen and paper with you. And when you meet people, talk to them and ask them where they're from and take notes and remember their names, remember the names of their kids. Well, now I can just go on LinkedIn. I can see, oh, someone lives in Minneapolis, St. Paul. I can see uh, where they went to school, right? University of St. Thomas, like all the icebreakers are already done for me. I just have to use the same principle, which is take the personal icebreakers and integrate them into your messaging. So great stuff. Great questions. Excellent thoughts. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Are there big podcast or associations and groups? Um, that's a good question. There are, there are like podcast conventions and things. There's also like a lot of um, podcasts like guest kind of groups where people go looking for guests and booking uh, guests. So, you know, I'm trying to think of one, what's it called? There's like podcast sponsorships too. I think there's one called Podcorn. So this is one where they try to connect 
advertisers and podcasters, right? So brands can come in and then they want you to like list your show on here. Um, this is an example of a podcast kind of community, right? So what happens is you come in as a podcaster and list, list your show and kind of share your stats and your audience. And then brands get to come in and go, hey, you know, will you do a sponsorship with us? We're trying to reach, you know, teenage girls uh, from the ages of whatever with our product. And you have a podcast aimed at teenage girls, right? Or we're trying to reach stay-at-home moms. You have a podcast for stay-at-home moms. So this is an example of one community. It's called Podcorn. Uh, it's free to sign up for. I'll put that in the notes. Um, oh, my screen sharing stopped. Weird. Okay. Um, were you guys able to see my screen? I don't know. Um, Podcorn. That's the one that hooks people up. Okay. So let me go back, try to screen share here, get all the craziness. All right. There we go. All right. A couple more questions. And then I want to share a couple of more things. People still root for the Vikings. This is true. And we're going to win Sunday. Cowboys are going down. All right. Yep. Would you link to your podcast episode in a LinkedIn campaign? Yeah, you can try that, Kurt. I've tried that with varying success, like posting in the status updates, posting in one-on-one -on -one messages. Hey, just curious. You're looking for a, I have a new podcast episode on blank topic. Here's a link. Uh, I haven't used Anchor before, at least. I'm not sure. Spreaker, I, all I know is Spreaker, if you're a beginner, is very easy to use. Um, you cannot talk to my wife about my hatred. She will agree with me, hopefully, <laughs> about my hatred of Wisconsin. Um, good stuff. Good questions. Love it, love it, love it. Sorry the screen went black and scary. Um, it's back now. Here's what I want to do, because I know we kind of riffed the second half of this. Um, I want to make sure if you want to take this further, um, and if you do type yes, type yes if you want more of this. Now I'm going to put my scary mask back on to scare you all into the next phase. If you want more tips like this, <laughs> type yes, type yes, because I have something fun for you. Uh, and let me find it. I love it. I never give up. I never give up on the fun, do I? Okay. I have a special, special offer for everybody. I'm going to pop it open. My podcast powerhouse course, Halloween edition. Halloween edition. Glory. All right. Steve says, yes. Love it, love it, love it. Okay. So I have an online course called Podcast Powerhouse that covers all of this. So that right now today, before you eat all the Halloween candy or while you eat. Whew, it's getting hot under here. While you eat all the Halloween candy. Um, you can actually go through this training. So let me get it here. Get podcast powerhouse here. I'm going to paste that in. Copy. Boom. I'm going to put it up here. I think I opened a redirect window for everyone, but if not, the link is now in the chat. Uh, and then let me show you a little bit about what's in it because I think this, I talked about it last week if you were here, but this is the online course podcasting powerhouse. It's going to give you the specific systems uh, what we've talked about today of how to not only create a podcast um, and how to do it for profits and get ads. Like I was just showing you how you can find sponsorships for your show so you can immediately monetize it. The fastest way to grow your podcast. There's even more tips about that. How to 9x each episode, all the repurposing secrets, tips and scripts for selling, kind of what Kurt and I were talking about, like how to you know build in sales funnels and what the best approaches are. How to turn, this is one of my favorite methods, how to turn podcast guests into paying clients, how to really make your podcast a referral engine so that people keep coming to you. These are really valuable, right? How to pitch yourself as a guest. I've had a lot of people buy this course. They don't even want to do their own podcast. They just want to know, how can I build my brand and get on other people's shows? Like I was showing you with Entrepreneur on Fire and Social Media Examiner and some of these big shows. I give you the exact scripts, the exact like email to send, fill in the blank. All of it's there. How to turn listeners into leads, covering some of the engaging elements of audio. By the way, it's still only $197, okay? Normally, this is $397. It's one payment only. You get lifetime access to the whole thing, free updates, all of it, 30-day risk-free money-back guarantee. So amazing course. Trust me, this is worth your time to jump on. Um, and I want to make sure. All right, so we got a lot of people on here still. Let me know if you're getting the course because I want to scream and shout and celebrate with you. So type type in the chat if you're grabbing the course. 
I'll show you to what it looks like, um, like all of my courses. It's in Thinkific. Uh, and so you'll get, if you've never bought a course from me before, you'll get a login to Thinkific. You'll come in and you'll see all the different training modules, right? So a 41 minute video, step by step, how to podcast for profits, the engaging audio, how to 9x your episode, fastest ways to grow your podcast, how to sell with it, right? Direct leads, how to follow up so that you can get people that you just had on your show. And I give you the scripts. So like, here's what to send them. Like here's literally copy and paste follow-ups. Um, super, super easy way to monetize yourself. Be able to get in again, how to pitch yourself for a podcast, training video, exact words to use, emails to send. We've got a bunch of bonus trainings in here as well um, with some experts. So John Lee Dumas, Rob Greenlee, I think had one of the first podcasts ever. This was a great one. Tom Schwab gave a great session about how to turn listeners into leads. Cliff Ravenscraft, man, that was a really long, deep dive. So there's tons of this in here. Again, it's only 197, right? I want you to get this today. Uh, anyone that signs up today, I'm going to send you your favorite Halloween candy as a bonus. All right. How about that? If you're signing up today, Steve is buying now. Glory. All right, Steve, here's what I want you to do. All right, Steve O, email me, John at Nemo. I'm trying to type, I don't have my glasses, nemomediagroup.com with your mailing address, and I will send you your favorite Halloween candy as a bonus for buying today. All right, tell me what type. All right, so Steve, email me, John at nemomediagroup.com with your favorite mailing address or with your favorite Halloween candy and your mailing address. And I'm going to send you uh, a port. It could be a huge portion. We'll just see how generous I'm feeling, but I'm going to send you your favorite Halloween candy. I'm going to do that as a bonus today. I will show anyone who does not sign up right now. I'm coming to your house on Halloween like this. And I'm going to pop up in your window. I'm going to be like this. Watch. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Well, if you're local, Kurt, I'm coming to Wisconsin. Uh, this is how everyone looks in Wisconsin. This is kind of your normal everyday face you see in Wisconsin. Is that not right? Okay. Who else is signing up? Let me know in the chat if you're signing up. If you're joining Steve, let me see. Steve is hopping in. I love it. I love it. I love it. All right, good. Who else is getting in? Who else wants candy? Do you, you Here, look at this. Do you want some candy? Come here. you want some candy? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Remember the Halloween ridiculousness about uh, child of the 80s? Razor blades and apples, all that stuff. Like, I will not send you any apples with razor blades or previously opened candy. I will not be like those terrible neighbors that did the homemade like stuff or healthy treats. Like, who wants an apple? Who wants celery? Who wants carrots? Give me candy, right? Okay, so here's what we want to do. I want to make sure I still see a lot of people um, on here. We've got Steve is signing up. I'm going to mail you your favorite Halloween treat, Steve. So just email me, john at nemomediagroup.com. Mailing address, favorite candy. We're going to take care of you. Uh, who else is signing up? Let me know if you're jumping in. I will make sure that this pops open for everybody. Right now, get the course and your free candy here. What a creative idea. Free candy. Who doesn't want free candy? All right, so get the course and your candy. I'll also pop that window open. I really, I mean, the nice thing about this training is you can get through it within a couple hours and implement right away and get quick wins. So like, if you want to learn how to monetize your podcast, get advertisers chasing you on platforms like Podcorn, that's in there. If you want to pitch yourself um, on as a guest on other shows, we can do that, right? We can get you in there, show you exactly what to say, how to say it, how I did it. So thank you, Steve. I'm glad you had fun. I cannot wait for anyone else that is signing up. Send my candy to Kurt. All right. I like it. I like it. I like it. I'm going to send Kurt. I'm going to send Kurt apples with razor blades because he's a Packer fan. So, Kurt, don't eat the apples. They're coming. I'm going to send you carrots, celery, rotten eggs. I'm going to egg your house. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to trick. No treats. Man, I can't let it go. I can't let my hatred of Wisconsin sport teams go. Kurt's a good sport, though. He knows this. He knows I'm just sort of kidding. So, anyway, thank you, everybody, for being on. I know we're hitting the top of the hour. Hop over to the checkout page, grab it. It's only one payment of $197. Uh, again, lifetime access. You get 30-day risk-free money-back guarantee, and I will send you free candy. You just have to email me. So thanks, everyone, for being on. Have a great Halloween. Have a spectacular time. 
I'll talk to you all soon. Be well.